this is um, uh, Sudoku. It's a number puzzle game. So I thought it would be interesting if the computer could solve a Sudoku um, puzzle. So this is a very uh, um, basic algorithm. It just, uh, the small numbers you see here are the poss possible uh, values. So I don't, everybody knows how to play Sudoku. You have a, you have one to nine on rows and one to nine on columns and one to nine in each uh, block. So it's just those three rules you can eliminate uh, uh, possibilities. And when you eliminate the possibility to just one number, then you know, well, that's the number that goes in, in that cell. There. So I thought that was kind of interesting that computer could solve. This won't solve every Sudoku puzzle, but um, at least it can solve some uh, simple ones. And this is a uh, free cell. I became addicted to free cell a while ago, and uh, I thought, well, couldn't a computer play free cell better than a human? So I made this little tool. It looks uh, looks like free cell, but it's not. It's um you can't you can't play it. You just uh, tell it to go, and it will try to uh, find go through every possible um, legal move to um, so this is used a lot and. Um, all kinds of computer algorithms. It's called a tree. So you uh, you start off with the starting uh, board position. And let's try a different one. This one. Start off with this position, and you have a, a limited number of legal moves that you can make. For example, here this red jack can go on top of this black queen. So it makes a list of the legal moves. And it adds that to a tree, and then uh, for the next uh, next level, you have another list of legal moves, and it's a kind of a wide, uh, a bushy tree. So there's usually for one any board position there might be say five or six legal moves. So you have this very bushy tree that spreads out very widely, but it is. Um, possible, the computer, because it can work so fast, can work through thousands and thousands of these uh, possibilities to find one solution that will get you to the end of the game. Then, um, just one more thing I want to show off. I showed you uh, fractals uh, earlier. Well, this is another kind of fractal. This is what they call a terrain fractal. So these um, mountains here are not uh, stored in the computer. They're they're created at the runtime, and they are uh, always different. So if you watch this for hours and hours, it never repeats this exact same uh, pattern. It just has a different uh, parameters. So here now we're over a flat area, which is just a parameters in the very simple algorithm to make a kind of a flat terrain. And then uh, if you wait a minute, the mountains will, mountain range will come up. But this is all a random, randomly generated. So this is used um, a lot in uh, um, actual uh, games when uh, you have a, a large, say for example, you have a uh, uh, polygons for a, a, a wall, but you want to have very uh, um, fine detail. So as you move closer to the wall, you want to be able to see detail of the wall. But if you try to store all the detail, that all the, as you get closer to the wall, you can see all kinds of dust particles or whatever. Um, if you tried to store all that in the computer, it would be impossible. So 
with uh, these kind of fractals, you can just store a very simple algorithm to, to uh, generate on the fly uh, the details or uh, the, the texture. This, that's, those are called uh, fractal textures. They're very uh, useful. So that brings me to the end of my slides. If you have any questions, I know I covered a lot of ground. If there's any one topic um, you would like me to uh, explain, don't be shy. Are there any questions? No, good. Let's go. Anyone? Well, um, so I'd like to ask a question, okay? okay. Uh, you have done a lot of uh, different things. And uh, my question is, because I'm a, a diagnostic radiologist, maybe, um, oh yes, joint histogram. This is going to be used for the uh, making a um, uh, subtraction image. Mm -hmm. um, have you ever heard of the application of this uh, software for the exact Subtraction image to uh, subtracting. Uh, what, what are you subtracting? Uh, for example, um, uh, post contrast image and uh, pre contrast image. Oh, okay. Do you think this is possible? Um, joint histogram is normally used for um, um, CT MR fusion. Mm. So uh, when you're not sure of the alignment and a the alignment, well, with a CTMR, it's, it's a more difficult problem because it's a 3D problem. Mm -hmm. So you don't know how to, you're trying to find the best possible alignment of the, um, of the two oh. different modalities. But if it's the same modality, mm -hmm. then it's not, it's not useful. So you were talking about the 3D to 3D um, adjustment, right? Well, that, that's for, for CTMR mm -hmm. fusion, which normally is what, what they use it for. What I mean, what I'm doing it for is, is 2D. Mm -hmm. I'm doing the um, this. The so 2D should be easier. Right? Yes, should be, but still plenty hard enough. Mm -hmm. But for what you for for image subtraction, mm -hmm. the uh, joint uh, histogram doesn't make sense because the images are already aligned. There's the same image, the pixel, but you're just subtracting the. the uh, Pixel value, so there's no problem of uh, shifting. Well, um, you know, sometimes you may experience a motion artifact or you know, uh, the different position because of the motion of the patient. Right, but the uh, the you said you bef the before uh, I forgot the before uh, before and after mm -hmm. were taken at the same instant. Mm -hmm. Both those images they were just uh, processed later in different ways. So the alignment should be perfect, mm. so I same. think. So this can be possible? I think not possible. Not possible. Or not, not, uh, not useful for your problem. So it's obvious. Okay. It's our time, so thank you very much. Yeah. And uh, we'll have next meeting, uh, next lecture on Thursday, December 10th. Dr. Kuge uh, will be talking about uh, the uh, uh, in terms of uh, pet new tracers. Thank you very much. That's it today. Thank you.